Where will the stock market go next year? Now, almost everyone agrees that the US can't match 2013 when the S&P gained some 30%. Performance like that just can't be repeated. And in any case, the Fed has started to taper off its QE bond purchases, which appeared to be supporting stocks. And in any case, again, US stocks unquestionably look expensive, even if they're not in a bubble. Well, US equity valuations are undoubtedly full if you look at them on a standalone basis, whether you just look at a forward PE or a Schiller PE. And they're really only clearly attractive against other asset classes like bonds, corporates and governments and so on. Um, but having said that, you know, Schiller PE ratio on 25 times, this is roughly where it was when Greenspan gave his famous irrational exuberance mm. speech in December 96. And of course, markets went up for another four years. To my mind, they're fully priced. They'll become more expensive. And it's really not until we start seeing tight money, real rates, who knows, maybe it's two now, maybe it's a little bit lower, but it's certainly above where we are. And the market will start telling you when money becomes tight. And, uh, and that'll give us the signs that we need to know when we're, we're in the last phase of the bull run. There's something else about that rise. It's remarkably uninterrupted. The biggest declines it suffered were still the lowest in 20 years. Complacency is always, yeah, is always a sign of, of, of worry, uh, something you should be focused on. I do expect we're moving from high returns in the kind of financial markets with low volatility to more volatility and lower returns. So that's the message for 2014. Your expectations around returns should come down a bit, and volatility may increase a bit as we see the sugar water, so to speak, of the central banks start to be withdrawn. There is an alternative view, that investors will feel they have no choice but to leave bonds and equities will be the only place to go. That could cause a melt-up in prices. Several former bears are now predicting that. But most seem confident that it won't be so aggressive. I think the outlook for US stocks is complex. Valuations are pretty full. Liquidity helped a lot in 2013, as did share buybacks. It was the year of the equity. It's going to be a bit harder next year because liquidity is not going to be growing so fast and a lot of the high yield markets that have funded equity buybacks are beginning to be extended. But I think they'll still make money in US equities next year, just a bit less than this year. Now there's one market that did even better than the US in 2013 and that was Japan. The Fed may be cutting back the supply of sugar, but if anything the Bank of Japan could increase the dose. It wants to create inflation. What if it succeeds but doesn't spark any growth? The risks in Japan are significant. They can't be really overstated because what you have is a government that's throwing the proverbial kitchen sink at mm. decades of, of no inflation and no growth. If they succeed in stimulating inflation and they do not succeed in stimulating economic growth, you have to ask yourself, what are you left with? We would call it Abageddon because that scenario could be a run on the debt markets in Japan. And given the debt burden in Japan, that would be a huge risk. Now, that's not our base case over the next 12 months, but it's significant enough that investors should consider it. I don't think Japan's going to succeed in great inflation in the next 12 months. You know, there have been something like 13 stimulus programs since 99 in Japan. That said, I think there'll be more monetary easing because the third arrow is not working so well, so I think the yen will come under pressure. And the question is, if there is inflation, how do you actually stimulate growth given their demographic challenges? And that's a recurring theme. There's more to getting Japan going again than finally sparking some inflation, even if Arbenomics has indeed started raising expectations. An improving global economy has got to be good news for Japan, um, and a rising dollar is also good news in the sense that it helps mm. the yen to, to stay loose. However, the big disappointment in Arbenomics to date has been the, the third arrow, and Japan desperately needs to deal with the legacy of its own crisis, which is the non-performing loans and the non-performing banking sector, and weak productivity growth, which uh, poses the greatest threat to the recovery in our view. Japan may be a victim of its own success in terms of the BOJ actually achieving inflation, but if nominal wages continue to hover around zero, they're going to suffer something that we've become used to in the UK, which is falling real wages. The base case for 2014 is continued growth in equities, but slower than this year. With the Fed still making money very cheap, it's hard not to be in stocks, and there's even some risk of a melt-up. But there are all kinds of hazards as the Fed exits QE. And the single greatest question mark for world equities in 2014 comes from Japan.